High-speed rail is an everyday transportation option for much of the world, but here in the United States, it's basically non-existent. But what if we did build out actual high-speed rail in this country? Here's where it would have the biggest impact. Hello and welcome to Atlas Explains the World. Today we are talking about high-speed rail in the United States, or rather the lack of it. While it's fun to dream of a nationwide network of high-speed rail zipping across the country, the reality is that any high-speed rail lines will be built on a regional level, connecting city hub to city hub. All that's to say, don't expect to be able to take a high-speed train from New York to Los Angeles anytime soon. But the truth is that the United States doesn't need coast-to-coast -coast high-speed rail. In fact, 90% of the benefits of such a network will be felt in a few key cities in a few key regions. And this is due to, one, the way the American economy has developed over the past few decades via the aforementioned mega regions, and two, the overall population density of the United States along with the limitations of high-speed rail. You see, the primary selling point of high-speed rail is its travel speed and its ease of use. It needs to be faster than traveling by a car on a highway, and it needs to be easier to use than boarding an airplane. If it fails at either one of those things, high-speed rail simply won't be economically feasible. This is why current Amtrak lines often struggle to get riders, because they're not really faster than cars, especially once you factor in the first and last mile of a trip, and why high-speed rail from New York to Los Angeles is practically infeasible. At that distance, it's faster and more convenient to fly on an airplane. Back to the main point of this video, there are currently four regions where our high-speed rail corridors actually make a lot of sense. So much so that it's shocking that we've only just begun the conversations around bringing high-speed rail to them. These high-speed rail corridors are California, connecting Los Angeles to San Francisco, which is actually being built out right now. The Pacific Northwest, connecting Portland, Seattle, and Vancouver, BC. Texas, connecting Houston and Dallas. And the Northeast, connecting Washington, DC, Philadelphia, New York City, and Boston. This kind of already exists today, but it's not quite high-speed rail. And with that, let's dive into our four high-speed rail regions. California high-speed rail is an actual thing that's being built right now, and it's been either planned or under construction for the last 15 years. It is, unfortunately, a good example of how to build high-speed rail wrong. That said, despite the current construction woes, high-speed rail connecting the Los Angeles region to the Bay Area still makes way too much sense to not build. The Los Angeles metro region has about 13 million people, the Bay Area an additional 5 million. With this amount of people, there's already thousands traveling daily between the two either by car or by plane. By car, this is about a six hour drive up I-5, not including any traffic, which there almost certainly will be. By plane, you can get there in about an hour and a half, but that time doesn't include the need to get to an airport an hour and a half early, nor does it account for all the security and restrictions and hassles that go with that experience. With a high speed rail line, the travel between downtown LA and downtown San Francisco is expected to take about two hours and 40 minutes. In fact, it's mandated to take no longer than that. At two hours and 40 minutes downtown to downtown, that's quite a bit faster than traveling by car and much more convenient and still faster than traveling by plane. So while the current California high-speed rail might be a bit of a boondoggle in terms of the time it's taken to build, ultimately, once completed, it will be a showcase for just what high-speed rail can do for a region in the United States. At its current pace, California high-speed rail between LA and San Francisco is expected to be open in 2033 about 25 years after voters initially approved California high-speed rail. While not currently under construction, there's recently been a bit of momentum in planning for a high-speed rail line that connects Portland, Oregon, Seattle, and Vancouver, British Columbia. But while high-speed rail is still in the planning phase for the Pacific Northwest, there is currently a dedicated regional Amtrak line that is already pretty competitive with driving times. That is when it's not being held up by a freight train, which happens often because Amtrak currently rides on tracks owned by freight rail companies. Still, a high-speed rail line would connect Portland, Oregon with about 2.5 million people to Seattle with about 4 million people to Vancouver with an additional 2.5 million people. And according to a 2019 study by the Washington State Department of Transportation, travel time between each city would be less than an hour. At that speed, it's far faster than any vehicle, even without traffic, and comparable to flight time without the need to deal with the airport. This makes high-speed rail highly competitive for the Pacific Northwest region. In addition to the travel time benefits, given the already fairly close proximity of the three cities, there's a lot of economic value in bringing them even closer together. There's a reason why Microsoft has spent its own money to help fund the previous studies, and it's because they see high-speed rail as a critical piece of infrastructure for their region. 
Unfortunately, high-speed rail in the Pacific Northwest is still quite a ways off. There's currently no plan to start construction anytime soon, and the region seems content to spit out a new study every few years to extol the benefits of high-speed rail, but that's about it. Still, it does seem like Washington State, with a little nudging by Microsoft, is getting more interested in moving forward with high-speed rail. Will anything come of all this? Only time will tell. Texas, like California, does have a real deal high-speed rail project in the works. The project, called Texas Central, would connect Houston to Dallas by way of just a single stop in between. This provides many speed benefits for the high-speed rail line, but it also means that access to it is relatively limited. Speaking of access to the high-speed rail line, Texas's primary cities, Houston, Dallas, Austin, and San Antonio, are in an interesting location relative to each other, and to the detriment of high-speed rail. While the current Texas high-speed rail project would connect Texas's two largest cities, Dallas has 7.5 million people and Houston has 7.2 million people, it's missing both Austin and San Antonio, which combined have an additional 4.7 million people. And the reason for this is because the four cities make up what's called the Texas Triangle. Essentially, there's no easy way to connect all four cities without going out of the way first. Despite this, connecting 14 million people with each other at just 90 minutes apart would transform the two cities in a way that's just not possible right now. Currently, thousands of people travel between the two cities either by car, which takes about four hours, or by plane, which takes about an hour and 15 minutes. Like with California, while the plane ride is technically faster than the would-be high-speed rail, again, traveling to the airport, dealing with security, and all the hassles around traveling by plane means that that one hour and 15 minute flight is really more like three hours minimum. The Texas Central High-Speed Rail Project will connect the two cities in a way that simply has never been possible before. Imagine being able to head down to Houston from Dallas for a day trip. That's not feasible today, but it will be with this high-speed rail line. Unlike the other three regions, the Northeast Corridor already has an established higher-speed rail corridor called the Acela that connects Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, and Boston. And not only is the Acela relatively fast with a maximum speed of 150 miles per hour, but it's also very much in demand, making it Amtrak's only profitable rail corridor in its entire system. Pre-pandemic, the Acela had about 50,000 people traveling on it per weekday. But while the Acela is fast compared to other Amtrak trains, it doesn't quite hit the definition of high-speed rail. Currently, to travel from Washington, D.C. to Boston would take about seven hours. That's far longer than a flight time of an hour and a half. Travel time by Acela is a bit better between the other cities, of course, but it's still not quite high speed, which is a shame because the Northeast Corridor is by far the densest, most populous region of the country and it would far and away be the best place for true high-speed rail in America. Amtrak does have a plan to increase speed and travel time of Acela by 2035, though it's fairly light on details, such as average travel speed. It is, however, promising that travel time between each hub city would be about a half hour, bringing the total travel time between Washington, D.C. and Boston from seven hours to something closer to three hours when you factor in all of the stops in between. At that speed, the Acela does get fairly competitive with air travel when you factor in the amount of time spent at the airport. Connecting the Northeast Corridor, which has over 40 million people, with true high-speed rail would absolutely revolutionize the region. Traveling from New York City to Washington, D.C. could very easily be a day trip. Some people already do make this a day trip, but it's a quite bit more effort at this moment. With a high-speed rail line, zipping up or down for the day would almost be as easy as driving across town. Regardless of which region gets it first, high-speed rail absolutely makes sense for the United States. But that doesn't mean it needs to be everywhere. Connecting highly populated economic regions would revolutionize the United States in a way that hasn't been done since the creation of the interstate highway system. In truth, there are probably about a dozen such regions where high-speed rail makes sense, and there are plenty of studies that extol the benefits of high-speed rail for those regions. But those regions will have to wait for another video on another day. Thank you for watching today's video. I believe there is so much potential for high-speed rail in the United States, but only if we can capitalize on it. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel. It really helps keep me going. And if you did like this video, check out some of my other videos right here.